lesson is going to distinguish between the nominal GDP of a nation and the real GDP of a nation. We're going to use an example of a simplified economy in which only three goods are produced between 2009 and 2010. First, let's go back and define GDP. GDP is simply the value of a nation's output in a particular period of time of goods and services. The nominal GDP of a nation measures the market value at current prices of a nation's output of goods and services. Now the key word here is the market value. Market value means that when we talk about nominal GDP, what we're considering is the price level experienced in the nation in that year. What this means is that if the price level increases from one year to the next, but the actual output of goods and services does not change, then a country's nominal GDP can grow between two periods of time. Now to give you an example of this, let's look at our table for Switzerland in 2009 and then look at the same table for Switzerland in 2010. As we see in our graph here, we see that Switzerland produces three goods cheese, chocolate, and watches. In 2009, Switzerland produced 10 cheeses that sold for a price of two francs each, 20 chocolates, which sold for a price of two francs each, and five watches, which sold for a price of 10 francs each. If we multiply the quantities times the prices, we get Switzerland's nominal GDP in 2009. This gives us a nominal GDP of 20 plus 40 plus 50. The total nominal GDP was 110 francs in 2009. This gives us the market value of Switzerland's output in the year that the output was produced. But let's look at 2010 and see what happened to the nominal GDP of Switzerland. And then we'll see why nominal GDP is somewhat an inferior measure of the actual output of Switzerland between these two years. As we can see in 2010, Switzerland's output of cheese and chocolate increased. Cheese increased from 10 to 12, so the quantity is increased. Chocolate increased from 20 to 25, and watches stayed the same. There was no change in the output of watches. But when we look at the price column, we can also see that prices increased for chocolate and cheese and watches. In fact, prices rose for all three goods in 2010. So what we get is a nominal GDP figure, which is inflated because of the higher price levels. Let's calculate nominal GDP now. If we add up the total market value of Switzerland's output in 2010, we see that Switzerland's nominal GDP would be 160 Swiss francs. Now, that's quite an increase from 110 Swiss francs in 2009 to 160 Swiss francs in 2010. Looking at these numbers alone, we might conclude that Switzerland's GDP increased dramatically by approximately 45 or 50 percent, in fact. However, this rate of growth of GDP overstates the true increase in the amount of goods and services produced in Switzerland because much of the increase in the nominal GDP is accounted for by the higher prices for Swiss goods in 2010 compared to 2009. So to give us a more accurate indicator of the actual output of Switzerland adjusted for these changes in the price level, we must calculate Switzerland's real GDP. And that brings us to the definition of real GDP. Real GDP measures the value of a nation's output of goods and services in a particular year adjusted for changes in the prices of goods and services from a base year. Now there's actually a simple formula for calculating the real GDP. To find the real GDP we measure the quantity of output in the current year the year we want to measure GDP for, and multiply this by the price of the output in a base year. With this statistical tool, we can come up with Switzerland's real GDP. So what we must do in our table here on the right is determine what the prices were for cheese, chocolate, and watches in the base year, which we will use 2009 for our base year. 
and then we can multiply Switzerland's output of those goods times the price that they would have been in the base year to give us a more accurate indicator of Switzerland's real output of the three goods in 2010. So I'm going to plug the prices in from our table on the left into our table on the right. So in fact if we use 2009 prices we have lower prices for all three goods since there was inflation between 2009 and 2010. Once we have multiplied the output in 2010 by the prices in 2009 we will have Switzerland's real GDP in 2010. So Switzerland produced 12 cheeses at the 2009 price, giving a value of 24 francs. 25 watches at 2009 prices create a value of 50 francs. And five watches in 2010, using the price from 2009, gives us a value of 50 francs. This gives us a real GDP of 124 we have just calculated Switzerland's real GDP in 2010. The real GDP of 124 francs tells us the value of Switzerland's output in 2010 based on prices in 2009. Now why is this more valuable as a measure of Switzerland's actual output than the nominal GDP? The reason, of course, is that between 2009 and 2010 prices rose in Switzerland, which inflated Switzerland's GDP figure. Whereas in 2009, Switzerland's nominal GDP was only 110 francs, in 2010 it grew dramatically to 160 francs. But the reason, the source of this economic growth in nominal GDP was not as much an increase in the actual output, which is determined by the quantity produced in 2010, as it was by increases in the price level, which was illustrated by the higher prices for all three goods experienced in 2010. So what we have now found is that Switzerland's real GDP is smaller than its nominal GDP, indicating that the nominal GDP had to be deflated in order to come up with the real GDP. So we can come up with one more valuable economic tool here, known as the GDP deflator. The GDP deflator simply measures the nominal GDP in a particular year divided by the real GDP in that year, which we found using the formula for real GDP over here. Let's go ahead and calculate Switzerland's GDP deflator in 2010 and then we can use that to find out what the inflation rate was in Switzerland using the GDP deflator as a price index. So Switzerland's nominal GDP of 160 divided by the real GDP of 124 gives us a value of 1.29 which we can turn into an index by multiplying that by 100, which gives us a GDP deflator price index of 129. So what does this number, 129, tell us? Well, this tells us basically that the average price of goods in Switzerland between 2009 and 2010 increased by 29%. How do we know that? Well, we could find the GDP deflator index for 2009 by doing the same calculation. Since 2009 is our base year, however, we can simply see that the GDP deflator index for 2009 is Switzerland's nominal GDP in 2009. We'll do this calculation down here. The nominal GDP in 2009 was 110, and we can divide that by the real GDP. But since the base year in our example here is 2009, the real GDP is also 110. That gives us a GDP deflator of 1 times 100 or 100. Now we have two years GDP deflators. We have the deflator for 2009, which is 100, and the deflator for 2010, which is 129. We can calculate the inflation using the GDP deflator index between these two years. That's simply the rate of change in the GDP deflator index which in this case is 129 minus 100 divided by 100 giving us 0 0.29 when we turn that into a percentage we get 29 percent inflation in a previous video lesson we talked about another tool for measuring the rate of inflation in a nation it was known as the consumer price index the GDP deflator price index is simply another way to calculate the rate of inflation Generally speaking, the GDP deflator index will be a broader measure of inflation than the consumer price index. 
The reason is a consumer price index considers only a basket of goods consumed by the typical household in a nation. However, the GDP deflator price index considers goods produced and consumed by all sectors of a nation's economy, including the government sector, the private firms in an economy, and goods produced for export within the nation. Therefore, the GDP deflator index can be used to calculate inflation, but it will give us a broader measure of the rate of inflation than the consumer price index will. So that brings this lesson to a close. We have distinguished between nominal GDP, which is simply the market value of a nation's output using current prices, and the real GDP, which measures the value of a nation's output in a particular year using the prices from a base year. The reason we consider real GDP to be a more accurate measure of the nation's actual output in a particular year is that it adjusts the nominal figure for changes in the price level between the year we are considering and a base year. We have also found the GDP deflator using the formula of nominal GDP divided by real GDP. This gives us an index which can be used to calculate the rate of inflation in a nation.